Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So tonight, you know, Bitcoin is climbing up. Bitcoin is looking good. Wants to come back to 40,000. But I noticed a lot of altcoins are still struggling. A lot of altcoins sold off this last week and has honestly been selling off for the last few months. So let's take a look real quick. Which ones are most oversold? Which ones are the best to pick up right now? And you guys are in for a treat. I have something special for you guys. So, strap on. Smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, make sure you follow me on social media, and check out all the latest news, article, and guides at CryptoZeros.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am a little late today, but that's okay. The later I am, the harder Bitcoin pumps. <laughs> So 39.7, like I said, it wants to break 40,000. I mean, it tried a couple times. Does it have enough momentum? Well, it certainly does, right? And, you know, right now, Bitcoin and the rest of the markets, you know, kind of, kind of waiting to see what happens, right? Because tomorrow, it's expected that Chair Powell will raise rates, but it'll be very tame, very hard. Uh, not hawkish, dovish, 25 basis points. But what everyone is looking at is how he's going to forecast the rest of this year. Is there going to be a half dozen increases for next uh, for this year, right? What is he going to say? I mean, obviously, with what's going on overseas, it's hard for Powell to be very, very, very aggressive. So the markets are kind of, kind of trying to predict or price this in. But we'll see. But you know what? For those of us that are Bitcoin holders, we know we already have. We're already holding on the best asset. We already have the best asset. We continue to do so. And I think many of you guys agree with me on that. And if you don't agree with me on that, well, then you need to get in the game. <laughs> you need to learn why Bitcoin is the answer right now, especially with what's going on, right? Uh, but besides Bitcoin, it's not the only answer. There are a lot of other great projects that have been oversold too much, too much selling recently, too much fear, too much FUD, right? But that is a good thing because you're supposed to buy when things are low. You're supposed to buy when there's blood in the streets, when there's fear, when others are panic selling, that's when you should be panic buying. That's how you make wealth. That's how you make money with crypto. Um, so before I get to that, just a few things. Um, it does look like I said what's going on overseas. Biden does sign um, a bill that that gives uh, 13.6 billion uh, to Ukraine for aid, which they they really need at this point in time. So obviously, uh, still a lot of geopolitical stuff that's going on. I'll cover more about that tomorrow morning. But right now. Right now, Bitcoin is coming up. Come on, let's see if we can break 40,000 by the end of this stream. Very, very possible. Very possible indeed. A uh, couple of things before I get into what I really want to say. Consensus raises $450 million in Series D funding. Consensus is getting absolutely huge. But there is still a lawsuit because JP Morgan owns part of Consensus and kind of forced them to put regulations on MetaMask, which really angered a lot of people, right? So I don't know how that's going to conclude. But it makes you wonder, you know, when you have a wallet like MetaMask, you think it's a decentralized wallet that it should be open to everyone, right? But it is controlled by a company, right? So does that really mean, oh, wow, look at that. We just shot up above $40,000. Look at that. Look at that. Man, it's going. 40,000 for, for it. Wow. We're going to shoot right up to 45,000. <laughs> He's going now. I mean, uh, probably 42, seven first, like last time, but you know, probably a lot of shorts getting uh, liquidated right now. And that's okay. We want to see that. But anyways, uh, you know, it just raises the question. A lot of the wallets tab that we use, right? Even though they're not in custodial, you control your keys, but, but they're still kind of controlled by centralized entities. So do they have the power and should they use that power to block off certain 
countries that are deemed, you know, unworthy of of using these wallets. Makes you wonder, right? Um, wow, wow. Look at look at this effect. Look at the George effect. I take full credit in this pump. Full credit because of me and you guys. We're all buying. I just got done saying how Bitcoin is the answer, and now it's pumping. I take 100% credit, and it's not due to anything else but the stream. Um, but if it goes down, it's not. I don't take credit for that. Um, all right, so speaking of uh, consensus, uh, Joseph Lubin also threw some shade at Solana, thinking that Solana is unsustainable. They're going to fake it, either fake it, and make it or fake it and die. That's really that's what he said. So he is he is uh, he is definitely throwing some shade at his biggest one of his biggest competition, Solana. And uh, we will see if he's right or not. And in the meantime, Ethereum obviously is preparing for their uh, preparing for their 2.0 merge, which should be happening in just three months. In three months from now, so. We will see who comes out as the clear winner. Um, Board Ape, those of you guys that are in NFT, Board Ape, obviously, uh, they have made some big splash because Yoga Labs recently just purchased um, CryptoPunks and uh, MeBits, basically Larva Labs, and now you know they are trying to jumpstart their own metaverse gaming project and go start selling land. I think this will be a huge success. So this is coming also. Um, bottom line is they are just getting absolutely huge. And speaking of NFTs, you know, if you are an FTX holder or FTX user, FTX.us, they do have a March giveaway. So if you trade a hundred dollars in crypto and NFTs, you can you can win a number of these things including VIP to to Coachella and trading cards, uh, you know, there's Genesis cards. I mean, there's a few other things. I think the big one is the the Coachella VIP tickets, which is going to be held in the Bahamas, I believe, which is very, very beautiful. But they are giving this away, and also they're giving away 50 NFTs. And all you have to do is input this promo code and trade $100 in crypto. Uh, or NFTs on FTX.us. So if you're interested, check them out. Use my URL in the description. And I did say you guys are in for a treat, right? Because we're talking so much about NFTs. You know what? Today, since Bitcoin is pumping around above 41000 why not? Let me give away some more. I am George Strap on NFTs. I know you guys enjoy this. I know you guys love it. And after this, you know, there's, there's only... Uh, there's only like two more two more weeks before this expires, and then that's it forever, right? So I'll have to think about in Q and A. I'll, I'll think about how uh, how to select the winners here. Let's give away five more. I've been giving away five, right? So let's give away five more today. Um, all right. So now let's go to CMC. Let's see. This has not refreshed. You could see. Just like 10 minutes ago, it was at 39.5. So now it's at 41.3. Is this go update? Let's give it a second here. Come on, CMC. Okay, finally. There you go. Even when it updated, it's, it's kind of slow. Uh, it's 41.1 right now. Can we get back to 42.7? Right? So this is where we were. Um, just a week ago, if we could break through this time, man, that would be fantastic. And then 45 will be the next stop. Let's see what happens at by the end of this stream. Okay. Anyways. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but you know, I thought, Hey, let's look at some of the most oversold crypto right now, because obviously Bitcoin, um, is coming up, but you can see Bitcoin dominance has shot up almost to 43%, 42.6. So Bitcoin has been holding better than a lot of altcoins, right? So there are a lot of projects that's very, very, very oversold right now. So I'm going to run through a few, give you my opinion, my analysis, and uh, and we'll go from there. All right. So number one, and I think I think this is a big mistake by many, is uh, 
is Ethereum. You can't, the mistake is you can't ignore Ethereum. I think there's a lot of other big caps out there. They're fantastic, but you can't, you can't skip on Ethereum. And you can see the last 90 days down about 35% versus Bitcoin's only 19%. So that's pretty significant, almost double, right? So Ethereum, you can't ignore because Ethereum 2.0 is out. Burning still happening, right? The number of ETH staked in Beacon Chain is all-time high. Um, and there's so much volume, so much liquidity locked in, right? Way beyond any of anyone else. So you can't ignore. Ethereum is like the Bitcoin of smart contracts. So number one is just I think it's Ethereum. Being under 3,000, um, obviously I think it's, it's, a, it's a good buy. But, you know, compared to all-time high of nearly 5,000, you're over 50% off right now. So if you go down the list here, several are not as oversold, but you know I have to stop by and look at look at this guy right here, Solana. Finally managed to buy some Luna. Congratulations, uh, Rashid said. Uh, Rashad, Rashid, Rashad, probably. Thanks for the pump. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I, I got to mention Solana, man. Solana down 54% in the last 90 days. That's horrendous, right? So obviously, there's more. Solana lost a lot of momentum. The, it has it had all the momentum in the world in 2021, being one of the strongest altcoins out there. And that has kind of moved away, I think, to, to Luna in some ways. And others, uh, you know, they had network issues, VCs. Uh, selling off and so forth, but you know what? I still think they're a, a terrific project. They're not just go disappear, right? So being oversold 50, 54 percent, that's just quite a lot. So I do think Solana, F, you know, under a hundred bucks, not too long ago was at a hundred bucks. I think under a hundred bucks, pretty good pickup too. Now some of these others that I'm skipping over does not mean they're bad. They're just not nearly as oversold. But you could see Cardano's also down about 40%, Avalanche down 35%, Polkadot down about 34%, right? I think these are all terrific L1s. You shouldn't you shouldn't skip over them. Um, but Solana definitely sticks out like a sore thumb right there. Uh, you go down the list, you got a couple of meme coins down about 37%, right? Uh, not to say that they're a good buy, even down 37%, but... You know, I know there are a lot of meme coin holders out there. So if you want a dollar cost average, I guess this wouldn't be a bad time. Polygon down 36%. I think they are fantastic. They would definitely climb up. Um, so I do think they're good buy right now. Now, I, I have Cosmos down on my thumbnail. I didn't realize they were actually up about 20% in the last 90 days. But regardless, they're still about 50% down from their all-time high. Cosmos is undervalued. I do think they're a very promising L1 with a lot of communication among their chains and they're still growing their DEXs. So I like Cosmos quite a lot, a lot. All right, now if you go down a little bit, you know, I can't help but see uh, Algorand down almost 50% within the last 90 days, right? Algorand is also promising L1. A lot of stuff happening um, just you know, in Latin America in general, and DeFi, NFTs, you know, stable coins, funds, they have a lot of stuff. They have a lot of stuff going. So uh, nearly down 50% in the last 90 days, very oversold. Um, you have a couple of uh, metaverse plays. Like, for example, Sandbox is down 47% compared to Decentraland's 32%, right? So obviously both. Very far off from their all-time high. I do think that there is a lot of potential, right? There's a lot of projects, a lot of companies, a lot of brands that are still getting involved with Metaverse. And who are they turning to? Decentralized and Sandbox. So I do think both of them being down, you know, one being down almost 48%, one being down 33%. I think they're fairly attractive right now. And overall, they're down about 60% around there. Uh, you have a couple, you know, in here like Elron. Elron actually is actually having a pretty good day, up 16%. 
right? And that's because there's this big NFT project that's about to launch uh, from Gary V and Jordan Peterson. Um, I forgot the name of it, but it's like some kind of conference. However, even with today's rise, they're still down 48% from the last 90 days, right? I think Elrond has a lot of potential, also very, very oversold. And compared to their all-time high of 542, they're at 166. I mean, ouch, that's like down like 70% from their highs, right? So definitely uh, oversold at this point. I mean, now it's starting to get uglier as you go down the list, but you do have someone like VeChain at 45%. I definitely think that they are excellent to pick up. Phantom, Phantom down only 21%, which is surprising, but if you look at how much they're down from their all-time high, obviously more than 50%, a lot of FUD around Phantom. This morning, they were close to $1. Now they have crawled up about 15% today, up to 125. But this morning, when it was like really bad, it seems like they were going to drop below a dollar. Excellent time. Again, whenever there's mass panic, that's when you want to buy in. You don't want to buy in after it starts pumping up. You want to buy in when there's a lot of fear. But obviously, you have to know what you're buying in. You don't just buy any random coin that's down big time, right? You have to do the research, or you listen to me, or listen to others. You know, understand what you're buying. But Phantom is a fantastic project. They have they have a lot of potential. Uh, Axie. Axie down 54%. Axie certainly lost a lot of their momentum. Being one of the biggest play during games, they lost a lot of momentum. Hopefully they can recover. Still big in Asia, I hear. There's still a lot of people use it as, as their primary source of income. So I do think it will come back. But... Keep in mind, there's a lot more competition these days, too. Especially from, you know, the new players that are coming in, like Star Atlas. Um, but also you have, like, DeFi Kingdoms and you have Gods and Chain. There's a few of them out there that's starting to gain real traction. Um, going down the list, what else is really, really, really oversold? I mean, uh, there are some that's promising, like Theta, Tezos, Helium. They're down about 30-something percent, all off. Very, very off from their all time high. I mean, especially Theta. You know, I I don't know. I can't explain Theta. Look at it. They were $16, and they're only at $3 now. That That's a tremendous drop. I, I, don't, I can't even calculate. That's like more than 70%. Um, but they're still the biggest decentralized streaming platform out there. Tezos, one, you know, L1, a lot of NFTs on there. Helium is all about low mesh network and... And I think they're a fantastic project. Um, they have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of like antennas worldwide now. They're absolutely huge. And they have a big partnership with Dish Network. So I think that's good. Dish Network, um, not Dish Network, the graph. The graph is, uh, you know, they moved recently. A lot of their subgraphs have moved to their main chain. So they've been building some momentum recently, up about 22%. So that's good, but still down 31% in the last 90 days. It's still very off, so good buy. I, a lot of these, if you notice, are good buys. But I'm looking for the ones that, that really sold off. For example, Gala and Pancake Swap, both nearly down 60% in the last 90 days. 60%. And they're off even more if you go from their all-time high. But Gala is a very promising gaming platform. All about Web 3.0. All about NFTs, right? No reason why they should be this oversold. Pancake Swap, people have asked me. Uh, basically, the biggest decks on Binance Smart Chain. They're not going to go away. Just a lot of panic selling, right? So, very, very, very oversold. Harmony also at 37%, and KuCoin token only 18%. They held pretty well. KuCoin, obviously, if you're using KuCoin, it's a fantastic token to hold, and they have their own chain getting started. But Harmony also, another L1 that I really like. I think they're definitely worth holding on to, and they will definitely go higher. Um, going down the list, what else? Engine down 47%. That's a big drop right there. You know, they're very... Very anxious to go full-blown on uh, Infinity right now with Polkadot. 
right? You could create like 3,000 NFTs with one click and near feedless. Think about the potential there, right? They're one of the pioneers of the ERC-20 standard or ERC standard, not 20, but ERC standards. And they go push that further with the affinity. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, that's going to be pretty big. And then what else is there? Like Kuzama down 56%. You know, Sister Chain of Polkadot, I think they're going to be around. Kandana, you know, one of the newcomers in the L1 space. Loads of potential, down 45%, right? Obviously off from their all-time high, but man, they could. I could definitely see them making a big recovery and, and uh, continue upwards. They have a lot of things coming out in the near future. So going down, what else? Really, 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 really oversold. Um, I would say like, you know, uh, there's a couple L1s that I don't really concentrate on, but they are oversold. Like Mina, Hollow, um, you know, they're, they're promising in their own ways, but I don't keep up that much with them. Um, but they're definitely oversold. Compound is like Ave, like a lending play, very oversold. And yeah, that rounds up the top 100. I'll just stick with the top 100. But as you can see, a lot, a lot of projects oversold. And again, you don't want to wait to buy or wait to DCA after, after things pump, right? You want to get when things are low. And I'm not saying that just because Bitcoin pumped up and I take 100% credit, um, I'm not saying <laughs> this is going to just continue back up, right? There may be more volatility, right? We need more clarity. We need to see what Powell says tomorrow. We need to see how the war is going to develop, right? So there's still a lot of uncertainty out there. Not saying that this is the exact point that things are going to go to the moon, but my point is no one knows, right? But you want to take advantage of the good project and you want to take advantage of the good opportunities when when they're around. When they present themselves, you got to take advantage. It's, it's easy as that. It's easy as that. All right. And just before I get into Q&A, let me see. You know, I'm pretty sure a lot of shorts got liquidated. So let, let, let's just check that number. Um, let's do the last hour. Oh, <laughs> You see that? Oh, 55 million right there. Gone. It's a big red candlestick. 55 million probably will be more, right? 55 million shorts wrecked. And that's what we want to see. We want to see short squeezes. We want to see we want to see the shorts get killed. I have a question I know you will never read, Goldfish. Okay, well, that's a statement. That's not a question, but thank you. Uh, that this chart is wrong. Can't be down 46 year to date. If it's four right now, all time. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if it's wrong or not. I don't think so. Are you excited enough about price action? You would throw one of your Lego sets on the floor and rebuild it later. No, no, I would not. I would not do that. Even if Bitcoin went up to a hundred thousand right now, you know how much of a pain it is. <laughs> To rebuild a Lego after you smash it like that. Can I check out? No, I, I'm not going to check out Hector Finance. Um, uh, Zahn asks, dude, how much keeping cash on the side do you expect people to have? The keeping cash on the side cannot be that much for anyone, mate. No, that's just lazy talk. That's just lazy talk. Anyone that's in crypto, anyone that's investing, first of all, should have stable income. And second of all, they should not be investing more than what they can afford to lose, right? So you're not just buying on credit. You're not borrowing money, right? If you have a good job, well, you could start saving more for cash on the side. If you don't, go get a side hustle. Go do something to build out that cash so you're in, so you're in a position so you could take advantage. Anyone that says, I'm just out of cash. I can't get any more cash. That's just lazy talk. That's just talk like you don't want to succeed. You don't want to continue on. You're not willing to do what it takes to achieve financial wealth, right? So I don't. I just don't agree with that. Um, am I taller than Bitboy? I don't know how tall he is. I don't remember. I met him once. 
I don't remember how tall he is. I'm 5'10", so I don't know how tall he is. I know I'm not taller than Crypto Crow, Jason. Uh, I think he's a he's a true seven footer. I, I've seen him in person. Very imposing, very tall. You can't miss him if you see him in person. <laughs> and he used to be an MMA fighter. I wonder if there's any clips of that still around. Um, Bitcoin is coming down a little bit. Still above forty one. Let's see if we can hold. If we if we get if we can hold above forty thousand at least, right? And build upon that, that would be fantastic. We'll see. All right. Oh, by the way. Um reason for the pump because I started streaming. That's the reason. Yeah, so I said I was gonna give five of these away, all right? This is gonna be really, really simple. Really simple. All right, so before I've you know gave riddles and stuff like that, I do real something really simple. And this relates to the contest I had last year that people could not figure out. But by now you should be able to figure it out because I played this clip enough. Okay. So you guys know I am the only person that's been playing this educational video about Ripple slash XRP, right? It is one video that everyone loves. No one hates it. It's the it, it's it's just so good, right? So the first five people that could tell me the symbol that represents the company that produced that video, along with their ETH address, will win a strap on NFT. Starting now, the very first five that could write the symbol for the company that produced the commercial or the educational video, along with your ETH address, you will win uh, I am George Strap on NFT, which I will send to you after this stream. You have to write the symbol. You can't write the name. If you write the name, it doesn't count. <laughs> All right. I think most people got it. First five people. And in case you don't know what video I'm talking about, I will play it after the stream. So I know the XRP guys love it because they get so excited seeing it. And it really helps pump XRP every time I play it. You know, it's just one of those things. All right. You guys can stop. I know more than five people already got it. <laughs> no more. No more. Uh, no more. No uh, more. Spamming the answer. So congratulations to the five people that won. And I'm pretty sure you guys are long-term watchers because you should know by heart which company produced the video. Luke, I like how you think. I like how you think. Man, you guys got uh, 5,000 people tonight. That's pretty good for uh, for this day and age. Make sure you smash the like. Make sure you follow me on social media. Make sure you check out some of my sponsors too. They need some love. So if you want to stay, check out Vold. You want to get in on Bitcoin and crypto, check out FTX.us. I showed you guys their contest, right? You want to buy crypto with your 401k and Roth RIA, check out I Trust Capital. You want a really, really, really good portfolio manager that you can manage with, manage your DeFi and crypto with also, check out CoinStats. If you want to buy domain names, NFT-based domain names, crypto-based domain names, domain names check out unstoppable domains and if you want to use a dex the best dex aggregator there is right now is one inch so check out one inch <laughs> people are still talking about how awesome the the video is Someone actually identified, I think, the main girl from the video. Hopefully it's her. I can't tell. Her modeling pics are, looks so different. But if it's her, 
I will definitely hire her for my conference, which should be next year. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to plan one of the greatest conferences ever, ever seen. Um, hopefully next year, hopefully next year though. Ethereum 2 and long-term thoughts on price. Samir, I talked about it. I can't give you long-term thoughts on price, but it is very oversold right now. And it's definitely one you don't want to ignore. Ethereum is like the Bitcoin of smart contracts, right? It's the first and it's still the biggest by far. Uh, will you do? No. You know what, what I'm going to do? You don't need to bring an ID, but you need to bring your NFT. I'm going to make it so that only NFT holders can, can come. No, for a conference, that would be hard. I was thinking for at meetups, I'm going to do that. But for conference, NFT holders will get free entry, automatic entry. Um, but for some meetups, I may make it so that you have to be a holder to join me in a meetup. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. But I'm, I'm trying to create a lot of use cases for NFT holders. I know a lot of you guys are buying just to support me in the channel. I do appreciate that. But I'm trying to give value back too, you know, by doing giveaways and buying, you know, adding utility to these NFTs. Uh, what does Doge need to do for you to like it? They need to do what Sheep is doing. They need to do something. Because they're not doing anything. They're just like, okay, we're around. That's it. And hopefully Elon pumps us. Look at what Sheep is doing versus what Doge is doing. Sheep is creating a layer two to make themselves faster. They're creating a game. They have their own swap. Does Doge, does Doge have their own swap? Is there a Doge swap around? No. Right? Are they doing burning of any kind? No, Sheep is actually testing burning too. They're doing what it takes to grow, right? And not become a meme coin. Doge is not doing any of that. You know why? Because there's no treasury. Because the two original founders sold all of their Doge. So they don't have billions to play with. Right? That's the problem. And one of the founders, he refuses to talk about it. He could have been a multi-billionaire and he's so... You know, I don't know about not, I don't know what the word is. Like he's so embarrassed by his project that he won't even get back in. But that's the problem with Doge. There's no treasury to develop anything. Shiba, on the other hand, they do, right? So they need to do what Shiba's doing, and then I'll start liking them. But right now, they're just hanging around doing not a whole lot of anything. Uh. Did I cover Microsoft MetaMask? I did not. I, 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 I missed it. I didn't see it. I didn't see anything about it. I like Jordan Peterson's videos. I do too. I think he, I love his debates. I love it when he debates Karens. You know, they all think they got him, right? And they don't. He just destroys all those Karens. Check out Game Gamium Center of All Metaverses. I don't think that's true, first of all. But uh, let's see. They're ICO. They're not even out yet. So I'm not gonna look at them right now. Um. What do you think about college basketball NFT this week? I don't follow college sports nor college basketball, so unfortunately, I have not kept up with that. Venezuela was blocked on MetaMask. I thought it was DeFi. No, I, I got done saying that. MetaMask is a wallet controlled by consensus, and consensus is a private company. Uh, a for-profit company, not an open source project, right? And they are also owned partly by JP Morgan. So there's a lawsuit to try to sell off JP Morgan shares from consensus. But that's the thing, you know, it's like, on one hand, MetaMask is the biggest browser-based wallet we have, and it's awesome. 
on the other hand, is not completely open to everyone, right? So that it, it did turn off a lot of people. But there are alternatives being built right now, obviously. Is it possible that Shadoshi Nakamoto Chad Yellen? Uh, no, zero chance. Zero chance. Why am I drinking Red Bull so late? I mean, I could I could drink Red Bull right like a minute before I sleep and I'll still pass out. I'm the one of those people, if I lay down, I will pass out no matter what. Um, what do you think about high yield projects like Shifu? Yeah, it's probably, it's not a scam, but, you know, too, you know, I could get rug pulled or whatever. Just don't want to take, you don't want to look into it or take a chance. Microsoft invests about $7 billion in consensus. A lot of people invested in consensus, including JP Morgan. So it's good for consensus. I don't know if it's good overall for the ecosystem. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, it, it's a slippery slope, right? You could argue, okay, so what if MetaMask bans Venezuela? Who cares? Well, what about, you know, what if they start banning... Russia, Russia citizens, which really has nothing to do with the war, right? It's Putin's war, but what if they did that? What if they start just blocking random people from access to their MetaMask account, right? So it's a slippery slope. You just have to be careful. All right. Uh, FOMC, Joe, I already talked about it. It is definitely coming tomorrow. So we're not out of work. There could be more volatility. But tonight we'll take it. We'll enjoy this pump caused by this stream. And uh, you know what? We'll see. We'll see tomorrow. If tomorrow's FOMC meeting results come out to be a nothing burger, the market is going to rally. It's going to rally hard, right? It's very unlikely that Powell can say anything really hawkish because of the war. You know, there's just too much uncertainty. So we will see, though. We will see. Do you think Jenna, Gina will accept to make a conference the next GeorgeCon? <laughs> you know what's funny? I, uh, I, sent her, um, I sent her a DM and I said, hey, I'd love to, you know, pick your brains on what's going on. You know, after the last, after the last uh, press conference, and she did not respond to me. So, most likely, that's a no. That's a no. All right, that is it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow, bright and early at eight fifteen Central Standard Time. And congratulations to everyone that won a strap on NFT. All right, take care, guys. Steve, thank you. Have a good night, and in case you have not watched the most educational video about Ripple ever created, you're in for a treat. Here you go. What do you think about Ripple? Well, I mean, I think it's too centralized, but I definitely want to meet Chris Larson. <laughs> <laughs>